Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to take a look at URL lib package from Python score libraries. Internet has many web pages and we use web browser to access the information from those web pages. We enter the URL into the address bar of the web browser. This URL stands for Uniform Resource Locator. It includes lots of information like protocol, HTTP or HTTPS followed by the host name which is the website's main domain name. Usually all URL should also have port number to specify the port on which the request is being served. But web browsers by default send requests to port 80 if it's using HTTP protocol, else port 443 if it's using HTTPS protocol. And that's why we don't need to explicitly specify the port number. After the port number, or in this case, after the host name, we may have path or query parameters. Path comes in the form of folder-like structure where each folder is separated from each other by forward slash. At the end, we may have query parameters in the form of key equals value. If there are more than one query parameters, they may be separated from each other by ampersand symbol. Let's open URL lib official documentation from the Python's official website. You can search for this document in your favorite search engine. All the links I'm gonna be showing in this video will be available in the description of this video. So make sure to check them out. If I take a look at the official documentation page, you can see the first line is that URL lib is a package that collects several modules for working with URLs. So you can see that it is divided into these four modules. Request module for opening and reading URLs. Error module that contains the exceptions which can be raised by the request module. Parse module for parsing different URLs. And there is robot parser for parsing robot.txt file. This is the file that's used by the search engines for crawling your website. We are going to be using request module in this video along with parse module. Let's try out how we can read the different URLs in the REPL environment. First, let's import the request module from the URL lib package. Now, we can check all the available functions using dir function. Here you can see many of the built-in functions available from the request module. We will be using some of this in this video. We can use URL open function to open any URL request. Let's take a look at help for this function. You can see that this function opens the URL which we pass into this function. This documentation is very long and that's why we can scroll down using spacebar. But I have read the first line and the arguments I need to pass. So I'm gonna be closing this one by typing Q. Let's first define the variable URL and assign the value of https google.com. So we are going to be making a request to google.com's homepage. When we don't specify any specific path, it's going to look for the homepage of that particular website. If I try to open this URL using request.url open and pass URL into this function, you can see that it returns this HTTP response object. So let's store this in a variable res. I can check the type of this variable using type of res. I can also check the available functions on this response object using dir function. So it has this closed attribute which tells 
whether the request has been closed or not. You can see that HTTP connection is still open to this website. HTTP protocol uses response code to verify if the response was success or a failure. We can check the response code using code attribute on this response object. Here you can see that it has response code of 200, meaning response was successful. There are few ranges of response code. Response code starting with 2 are usually success. Similarly, the ones which start from 3 means the request was redirected. Those starting with 4 means it has error from the client side. The usual one is 404 not found error code which means the URL client requested is not a valid URL or probably it doesn't exist. Finally, response code with 5 means there was a server side error. We can take a look at initial part of the response by using peak method on the response object. It has this B which means it's a binary object. If we want to look into the headers for this response object, we can get them using rest.getHeaders method. This method returns a list with header and its value as tuple. You can see that it is using character set of ISO 8859. If I want to get specific header information from these headers, I can get them by using getHeader method and I need to pass the header key as the argument to this function. If I check res.getHeader of content type, you can see that the response is simple text HTML response. If it was sending JSON response, it would have content type as application JSON. There is a great website for JSON placeholder data. It's just random data in JSON format for testing out the client side code. If I click on this to-do's link, it returns JSON data. If I need just one record, I can add slash one and you can see that it returns only one record. Let's query this data. Let me copy this URL and save it into JSON URL variable. Let's make a request to this URL and save it in JSON REST variable. Let's first confirm if the request was successfully responded by checking the code for this response object. And yes, it is a success with response code of 200. Now, if I check the content type for this response object, I get back application JSON. If I want to read complete response, I can use the read method on any response object. Let's read our Google response and store the result in data variable. If I print this data, you can see that it is the complete code of Google's homepage. If I check the type for this data variable, I can see that it's a class bytes. To convert it to string, I have to use the decode method. So data.decode and this decode method takes a character set that was used to encode this information. We had seen that earlier, so let's pass ISO 8859-1 and I get back the complete data in the text format. This is the response we get when we query Google's homepage. So that's just a brief overview of how you can make requests to external web addresses using Python's built-in library URL lib. If you are working on a serious project, probably you should be using the request library. 
The same recommendation you can see from this request module of the URL lib package. I will be creating a separate video on request library because that's the recommended approach for working with external web request using Python. That's all I wanted to show in this video. I hope you found this video informative. If you like this content, please support me by subscribing to my channel and sharing this with others. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you in the next one.